And we're just a couple of weeks out now from the Michigan primary, but make no mistake, political season is in full swing and it's going to stay that way through November. Oh, it sure is. So be prepared for the onslaught of ads and news stories filling your Facebook and Twitter feeds. But as our Steve Garagiola shows us, some of those stories are fake and they are not that easy to spot. 2020 is already bursting with fast breaking and emotionally charged news. And in the months ahead, it will come faster and hotter. So where do you get your political news? I get it from Facebook or Instagram, social media. I get it from the local news at night, uh, the national news sometimes as well, family, friends. Are your sources of information reliable? Well, a lot of my friends will talk about some of the news that they read on social media and a lot of it may seem a little iffy, so I try and dig into the facts. But it's getting hard to sort fiction from the facts. During the presidential campaigns in 2016, we first became familiar with the phrase fake news. Much of the focus is on Facebook, the largest social media service on the planet. Creator Mark Zuckerberg has long insisted fake news on Facebook is not a serious problem. The idea that you know, fake news on Facebook, uh, of which you know, it's, a, it's a very small amount of, of, um, of the content, uh, influence the, the election in any way, I think, is a, a pretty crazy idea. A recent survey from the Pew Research Center found that 50% of Americans cite Facebook as their primary and, in many cases, only source of news. But how reliable is that source? After everything that went down with Facebook recently, you got to check more than one source. I think it's fair to say that we are uh, in an epidemic of misinformation. Perhaps there's not more misinformation out there, but certainly the access to it. Fergus Bell teaches news reporters, writers, and producers how to identify fake news and avoid sharing it. But he says everyone who posts information to social media bears responsibility. A lot of people share without actually reading the thing that they're sharing. When it comes to misleading headlines, and in some cases, outright lies, what can we all do to avoid getting sucked into believing it and worse, sharing it? Are you operating in a little bubble? You know, you, you see the things that your friends share, and your friends probably have a lot of common beliefs with you. What are other people sharing or saying about this? Is there an opposing view? There are always opposing views. I like to listen to people who are uh, going to tell me both sides, even if they criticize what I agree with. No one's asking you to abandon your beliefs or your standards or your morals. All we're saying is look at what other people are saying. If it doesn't change anything, fine. But it's really useful to know what, what all sides of the argument are. We get busy, careless, complacent. Fergus says blind trust is no longer an option. Take a few minutes to consider before hitting the share button. Healthy skepticism, yes, absolutely. But we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be scared of trusting people. But people should earn our trust. You shouldn't believe someone because they say believe me. You should trust them because they've earned it and they've proven why you should trust them. Way back in 1845, mystery writer Edgar Allan Poe offered this nugget. Believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see. Cynical or just good advice in this 2020 news cycle? I'm Steve Garagiola, Local 4.